This is a follow-up to my earlier videos on bike boulevards and I think one reason why bike boulevards have been reasonably successful uh, or able to be built is there's a lot of traffic calm streets already. So that's Cambridge Street over there, it's two lanes in both directions and there's a whole bunch of streets that go off Cambridge Street which look like this. Uh, and what you can see is, I don't know when, but at some time they've all been narrowed, now I guess they've been narrowed and calmed. Well if they haven't been narrowed they've certainly been calmed. So this is uh, one example where about every 100 metres there's a speed hump and you can see the street isn't terribly wide. I mean there's obviously plenty of room here for cars to park pass in uh, opposite directions and I had a look at the no parking signs along here and residents I think can park uh, anytime but visitors can only park for two hours Monday to Friday. So I guess that's one way they keep the streets clear of cars and encourage people to park in their driveways. And you can see that because the street is fairly narrow, they have massive reservations. I mean, look at that. These reservations are so wide, uh, people can park in their driveways and not obstruct the footpath or have their vehicle nose sticking out onto the road, uh, which is pretty impressive if you think about it. I mean, that's one way to keep cars off the street is allow people to do that. Or, uh, as you can see here, you know, a couple of cars parked on the grass, uh, which you know is just a very normal thing over here. And this goes on for quite some time and it's just repeat, repeat, repeat. Now, unlike the uh, bike boulevards, there's no tree nibs uh, sticking out on the road. They haven't uh, allocated any areas off the side, on the sides of the streets for parking. Uh, there's no chicanes. And here is where it widens out as we come up towards an intersection. But you can see actually at the intersection, they've narrowed it very considerably and tightened it. So when a driver turns into this street, they don't have a long sweeping curve to come into. They actually have to, it's like a fairly sharp turn. So it really slows them down coming into the street. And at the threshold of the intersection, they have paved it in brick. And you know, there's all those visual clues there saying, slow down, this is a slow street. And I guess this is a more traditional slow point would have, you know, a little bit of a chicane and, you know, a little bit of a curb build out there. And it's, it wasn't just this street. All the streets in parallel to this are like this. The whole suburb, the whole uh, network of streets, as far as I can see, has been calmed in this fashion. So, you know, I think it's fairly straightforward to put a bike boulevard in. Now, let's compare that to Caranto Street in Moorimba. And I think the reservation of this street is about the same width from um, property line to property line. But look at the difference in the width of how much asphalt there is. You know, it's almost double the size of this street. And as a result, uh, it forces people to park on the street rather than in their driveways. It also encourages speeding. You know, I, I lived on the street for some years and I swear people would be doing 100 kilometers an hour down this street because it's wide and it's straight and it's completely possible. Now, what's the problem though with narrowing a street like this uh, and calming it? Well, it's flipping expensive. Uh, you know, obviously you've got to change where the drainage is. Um, things like the, uh, the power poles for lighting. You know, if, if Energy Australia or whoever it is that has the power poles actually has to move them uh, a couple of metres in to still provide lighting to the street, you know, that costs an absolute bomb. Every driveway needs to be extended. Uh, you know, all the curbing needs to be pulled up and relayed. You know, it just goes on and on and on. Uh, you know, you're probably looking at, for, I don't know, a couple of million bucks for a street like this to uh, to redo it. But what does it cost to resurface a street like this when, it, when the asphalt gets to the end of its life? And maybe that's an opportunity to say, well, look, it might cost half a million dollars to resurface it as it is. Or, you know, we could try and find some money to... Uh, narrow it, calm it, green it. Uh, obviously you can put a lot more trees into a wider street like this, you can put a lot more grass in and that means a lot less impervious surface area so you've got less stormwater runoff so there's less pressure on the uh, stormwater system. And Im imagine all the really wide quiet streets like this around Five Dock, if they were narrowed how much less stormwater would run off in, uh, in a storm if it could all be absorbed by grass instead of running off the asphalt. Probably huge amounts. Uh, plus these streets look a hell of a lot better and, and they're quieter, they're, they're more pleasant to live on. Uh, so you know, as I, was, I think this is related back to the bike boulevard issue, how hard is it to convert a street which is already calmed into a bike boulevard? 
And I, I don't know what the answer is. I mean, would they even bother? That might even say, well, look, essentially this thing is already a pseudo bike boulevard because it's a, it's a quiet street. We might formalise it by uh, you know, putting down some stencils on the road, uh, putting up some 30 km an hour speed limits, maybe sticking the odd chicane in here and there to, uh, uh, you know, really slow things down. But, uh, you know, they're already 50% or more of the way there, or maybe 80% of the way there towards having, um, you know, a grid of bike boulevards right throughout these streets. So uh, from our perspective, maybe the thing to do is, well, do you do this one step at a time? Uh, firstly, you bring in um, intensive calming across the, uh, the whole grid. And once that's settled and people are used to it, you can go, well, we, you know, we can come along and plonk, a, uh, plonk bike boulevards on top of this. Food for thought. Um, when I get my front camera, hopefully sometime next week, I might be able to go and shoot some better footage of uh, streets like this. Bye for now.